Counting methods. First, we're going to take a look at the fundamental counting rules. If we have event A can happen in m ways, and event B, which can happen in n ways, then the number of ways that event A can happen followed by event B is given by the product of m and n. So for example, if we're supposed to select one card from a full deck of playing cards, followed by selecting a number from 1 to 20, since there are 52 cards, we have 52 choices followed by selecting one number from a list of 20 numbers. So the total number of ways that this is possible will be simply 52 times 20, which is 1,040 different ways. In this example, we want to find the number of different lock combinations for the bike lock shown below if the same digit can be chosen repeatedly. Well, there are 10 choices for each digit, 0 through 9. And we have to select 4 digits which they can be chosen repeatedly. So, the answer will be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which 10 is the number of choices per digit. So we can do that in 10,000 different ways. Now how many four digit numbers can be formed from the digits 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, and 9 if each digit can be used only once. Now for the first digit we have six choices but that choice cannot be used again. Now we have five digits to choose from for the second digit and this selection cannot be used again. Therefore, by using the fundamental counting rule, we get 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, which gives us 360 different four-digit numbers. What is n factorial? Well, first, the exclamation mark is called factorial in mathematics and n factorial is the product of decreasing natural numbers starting with n. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to 3 times 2 times 1. And also, by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So if we want to find 6 factorial, using the definition of factorial, we get 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 720. Now keep in mind, technology can help us a great deal to find uh, most of these computations. Okay, in this example we want to simplify 10 factorial divided by the product of 2 factorial and 8 factorial. We're going to use the definition of factorial and expand these numbers and then we're going to basically reduce this fraction to get 45. Now to simplify this one again we're going to use the definition of factorial. We're going to reduce the fraction crossing out the common factors 
and the answer would be 27,720 for that expression. Now let's take a look at permutation. Permutation is the study of all possible rearranging or reordering a list of n objects. So the purpose of studying permutation is to compute the number of ways of all possible arrangements and then to compute probabilities for certain arrangement. What is factorial rule? It's the way to compute the number of possible arrangements when there are n items and they're all different. We select all of the n items without replacement. Once these conditions are satisfied, the number of permutations will be n factorial. So in this example, we want to know how many five-letter words can we make by using the letters A, B, C, D, and E. Using the factorial rule, the answer is 5 factorial. One hundred twenty different words. Lisa has four different books and she wishes to place them in a bookshelf. We want to find out how many different ways she can, she can do this. For the first book, she has four possible selections. Then she has three possible selections for the second book and so on. So using the fundamental counting rule, or even using the factorial rule, we get four choices for the first one, times three choices for the second one, times two times one, which is equivalent to four factorial. So the answer is 24 ways to arrange four books in the bookshelf. Now let's take a look at the modified factorial rule. Again, it's the way to compute the number of all possible arrangements when there are n items, but now some of the items are identical. We select all of the n items without replacement. If these conditions are satisfied, in addition to rearrangements of distinct items are considered different arrangements. Then the number of permutations will be given by n factorial, which is the total number of items, divided by n1 factorial, n2 factorial, all the way to nk, where n1 items are alike, n2 items are alike, and so on. And the sum of the n1s, n2s, all the way to nk should be equal to the total number of items, n. So let's look at the word balloon using the letters in this word. How many distinct seven-letter words can we make? Well, there are seven letters, but some of them are alike. So letters B, A, and N, they all appear once, but letters L and O, they each appear twice. So now, using the modified factorial rule, we get seven factorial for the total number of letters divided by each letters and how many times they appear. 
and we're going to simplify this like we did earlier and the answer is 1260 different words. Now what is NPR? Again, it's the way to, commu uh, to compute the number of possible arrangements when these conditions are satisfied. There are n items and they're all different. We select r items without replacement. And most importantly is when the order of the arrangements matter. Once these conditions are satisfied, then the number of permutation is given by the formula for NPR, which is N factorial divided by the quantity N minus R factorial. In a recent city election, all registered voters were supposed to vote for mayor, controller, and a city attorney. And there were eight candidates running for these three positions. How many ways can this be done? So in this one, the order matters. The mayor cannot be controller and the city attorney cannot be controller or mayor. And we have eight candidates. So the number of ways that this can be done is given by the permutation formula 8P3. We do the calculation and there are 336 different ways to select or to vote for three people for these three positions. Now what is NCR? It's the way, again, to compute the number of all possible arrangements when there are n items and they're all different. We select r items without replacement. But in this case, order does not matter. If all these conditions are satisfied, the number of combination is given by the formula for NCR which is n factorial divided by the product of r factorial and the quantity n minus r factorial. The major difference between NCR and NPR is that in NCR order does not matter. Let's look at the city election again and let's say there were seven males and three female were candidates and we were supposed to select only three people. How many ways can we select three candidates and how many ways can we select two males and one female? Well there are ten candidates and we need to select only three people there is no position to select four. So here order does not matter. And this can be done by using 10C3, using the formula, and we can do that by 120 different ways. Now we want to select two males and one female. So what would be the number of ways this is possible? Well, there were seven males and we're selecting two of them times there were three females and we were selecting one of them. So it's a combination rule in addition to fundamental rule of counting. So the answer is 21 times 3, 63 different ways. Now if we wish to find the number of ways of selecting one male and two females is the same logic, but this time out of seven males we're selecting one, so that would be 7C1 times 
there are three females and we're selecting two. So we do the computation and this can be done in 21 different ways. I hope this presentation helped you understand the counting methods because this becomes very handy when doing uh, certain probability problems.